So Peter, welcome to uh, Tech Talk at Best of High End. Uh, first question, Lingdorf Audio always wants to stay ahead in audio technology. Why is that one of your many motivations? Well, it's maybe not so much about staying ahead. We don't think so much about staying ahead of somebody else or some other companies. It's more that I really uh, this think that good music deserves better reproduction. And fortunately, that there's always things you can marginally make better every year. And we're always working on that. And of course, we have uh, gathered a team of engineers that have the same ambition, always to improve things, not to do just the same and the same and the same. So my ambition is always better sound. And if it has nothing to do with better sound, then I don't, give, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to spend money on something that is not improving sound quality. Mm -hmm. So is that that kind of a, a state of mind with you that you say, okay, I have this mentality to always find ways to improve sound and music? Well, I, I'm so fascinated that every time we make small steps and improving things, with the speaker drivers, crossovers, digital and analog and all of that, the speaker design and all of that. Every time we improve something, it is very clearly audible. And that's just so fascinating. It's not like, oh, it's going to go a little bit that way and that way and that way. It's always, you know, gradual improvement. And it's, it's totally fascinating. And I'm always flabbergasted uh, that you can continue to hear the differences. And uh, by the way, that's one of the reasons I'm always very, very careful with my ears. I always use uh, noise cancelling headsets when I drive my car. No music, no sound in them, just less noise. So I can recommend that to all of our viewers that are now take damn good care of your ears. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about Purify? It was founded as a startup to push audio technology further. Well, uh, I have to backtrack then because uh, back in the 90s I was involved, of course, in room correction when I owned Snell Acoustics. That was where we started it and I just looked up. It was actually December 92 that we did the first demos of the digital room correction technology. And then in 97, 98 I met Lars Rispo, who was a young uh, engineer uh, working for a bigger company and so on and he was introduced to me and immediately I thought this guy is really special because not only a, does he appear to be a fabulous engineer but he's also a musician he's a very very musically talented and that combination was fascinating to me and then his project was to make a fully digital amplifier and I financed uh, the early development of that and uh, put up money for some of the patents and so on. And then in the year 2000, Lars sold the company to Texas Instruments. And Lars then became head of engineering for Texas Instruments for the digital amplification technology that he had sold to them. And, but he continued to be a very, very good friend. Uh, we were meeting in the summer and all of that. And then during, I think, 2012, 13, we started to talk more and more together. And Lars was, wanted to do something that was just about improving sound and not working a little bit like a slave just to make more products and so on, where nobody was really interested in really pushing the boundaries. And Lars started to talk about, talk about another guy that I had heard a lot about, which was Bruno Putzis. And when Lars said that Bruno is smarter than himself, I thought, nah, you must be kidding. And then I met Bruno, and Bruno said, oh, Lars is the smartest cookie here. <laughs> so they couldn't really agree on who's the smartest guy, who's <laughs> the brightest guy. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. And then uh, we, we talked and talked and talked. I don't know whose idea it was to start a company together. 
but we very, very quickly agreed that that was what we wanted to do. And I would then, of course, uh, help with the financing, some of the ideas and the structure of the company and all of that. So we found it uh, Purify Audio. And the ambition was really only to work on things first that Lars really enjoyed to work with, uh, improve and so on. And also that Bruno, it should be a, a labor of love for both of them. That was really job number one. And then do something that was fantastic. And um, so that was really the start of, of Purify. And after that, a lot of things have happened, have happened in Purify. Uh, Lars uh, rented an office uh, at a guy called Carsten Tingor, who was developing loudspeaker drivers for a lot of companies, for Genelec and many other higher-end uh, pro companies and so on. He was developing the speaker drivers. And he was, um, he is, the former chief engineer for Scanspeak, Vifa and Peerless. So he really knows his stuff about driver design and the manufacturing and everything like that. But to make a long story short, Lars rented an office at Carsten Tingor's place where Carsten was tinkering with loudspeaker drivers. And Lars Hispo got really curious about mm, what are these drivers? How do you measure loudspeaker drivers and so on? And then he realized that loudspeaker drivers make a lot of distortion, a heck of a lot of distortion. Much, much more distortion than amplifiers and so on. And Lars and Bruno started talking and they started talking with Carsten Tingo and they started to work on a project where they would try to uh, cancel the distortion in a loudspeaker by digital uh, processing. But then Lars decided to dive deeper into the performance of the speaker drivers. And he looked at all the measurement technology that Carsten Tingor had in his lab, which was state of the art, the best that was there that you could buy. And he realized it's not good enough. There's a lot of things we don't know about speaker drivers when they move, the acceleration, everything like that. So Lars decided, or talked to Bruno and Carsten, so we better make some new, new measurement technology. So they did completely new measurement technology that would give much more information about speaker drivers. And then they realized that the, that the distortion characteristics of a speaker driver or the, the things that happens in the magnet system, also the ion distortion is totally unpredictable and it's chaotic. And it, the ion distortion depends on what the speaker played just a few seconds ago. So it's not something you can predict or cancel out with digital means. So we decided we start to make speaker drivers to fix all those problems. And uh, Carsten, Lars, Bruno put their good brains together and very systematically started from scratch on speaker drivers. And from the outside, you will see that the surround looks totally different than anything else. So that's the most visible part. But there are, I don't know how many things that have been changed. And uh, Lars has done a lot of the mathematics and so on to predict performance of the magnet systems, the cone, uh, the surround and all of that. So we have mathematical models that are made in-house, simulations where we have con complete confidence in our uh, simulations to the degree that the last two woofers we designed have been completely designed in a computer. And we went straight from the computer design to tooling. And once they put the parts together, it was exactly as planned. And that has never, I can guarantee, that has never happened before. Oh, maybe if you make a simple driver, it is as bad as you expected, right? <laughs> but this is, <laughs> we just finished a 10 inch woofer which has the lowest, lowest distortion of any moving coil speaker ever, regardless of brand and cost and size and everything. It's the lowest distortion ever by a huge margin. So, so that's, this is totally fascinating. And how, is that, how does that relate, this, this new technology of the drivers, how does that relate to the listening experience? 
it it makes the greatest difference, honestly, if you, for instance, have a two-way six and a half inch system, because it's really when the cone moves more that you have the greatest difference in sound quality. Uh, and, and there the six and a half inch, uh, for instance, is quite phenomenally powerful. And also it has a lot less distortion <clears throat> than any other six and a half inch driver. Not only when you measure the harmonic distortion, which is, which is what you sometimes see from manufacturers. It's interesting that if you look at, at, uh, <clears throat> at the parameters or the specifications you get from even very respectable, respectable manufacturers of speaker drivers, you don't almost never see distortion performance. Or if you see it, it's always in percent of the output, not a logarithmic scale, because then it looks really, really, really low <laughs> when it's not really, really low. So the harmonic distortion is way lower, but the more important thing is that intermodulation distortion, which means distortion that happens if you have several tones at one time, which is what is happening in a speaker driver. There the difference is far greater in terms of distortion than for other speaker drivers. So. Purify is really moving the boundaries uh, in a very audible way, especially if it's uh, drivers that are designed for two-way systems. If you make a three-way system, it will be less pronounced, but there's still going to be huge benefits to that sound quality difference because the basic distortion is much lower. And how is it to experience uh, listening to a speaker that has almost no distortion. How, how would you describe such an experience then? It's nicer. <laughs> That's a short answer. <laughs> it's much nicer. Uh, it's, it's cleaner, it's more relaxed. The thing is you end up sometimes playing quite a bit louder than you had expected. So you have to be a little bit careful with the volume control because all of a sudden you feel your pants are shaking, right? but it doesn't sound very loud. So there are a few things happening there that are very, very positive. Um, of course, when we make our Lungdorf systems, we always were using our digital capabilities to change the crossover points and things like that to also reduce distortion. Uh, but uh, for conventional uh, passive loudspeakers, this is revolutionary. Uh, it, it, it's unbelievable. The, there are so many things that have been changed. So many things that Lars and Bruno and Carsten found out about. Just the chassis had to be changed because the, the part of the aluminum chassis that is closest to the magnet is no longer a closed loop because that closed loop creates distortion. And that's something that nobody ever realized before. And that's simply because all the other distortion components have been reduced so much that all of a sudden that sticks out like a th sore thumb. Nobody ever knew it was a problem because everything else was so distorted. But does then less distortion mean that you get more of the signal, that you hear more things going on in the reproduction that you never heard before, that you have more, like, more resolution, more refinement? It's, um, you know, if you listen to a conventional speaker and you start to play a little bit louder, you always hear that it's kind of, it makes like, you know, the fluffy sound it is not. And the most remarkable thing about a, 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 a Purify Woof or mid-range is that you can play the bass and a female voice at the same time. And maybe the cone moves 20 millimeters, but the tone of the voice is completely clean. Like it doesn't move at all. So for somebody who's been involved in speaker design for many, many years since I could walk almost, I always knew that 
as soon as you could see the cones move, the sound got messy. <laughs> and when I heard the Purify drives the first time, I had to get up and look at the speaker because I could hear the volume. And I walked up and I could see it moved like a lot. And that would normally create a lot of distortion. But it was completely clean. It was unnatural. So we see for the first time in a Lingdorf product now a Purify uh, unit, a, yep. a speaker unit. It's called the Q100. Yep. What can you tell us about it? It is the first real high-end loudspeaker from Lingdorf. In terms of the, yeah, for the Lingdorf brand, it is the first real high-end speaker. And <clears throat> we really designed it as a, a, a tribute to Purify in a way because the The cabinet is triangular, there's no, uh, there's all odd angles. It was very carefully worked out to have absolutely no spurious resonances in the box and so on. Uh, the bottom part of it is three and a half inch thick and so on. So we went overboard to make sure that, that the cabinet would not add any kind of distortion to the system. And we're using the same uh, AMT tweeter that we use for the Steinway system. So that's also top notch, the best we have. So it was a labor of love. And then we also, of course, uh, designed it in a way where it will appeal to people that live in a beautiful flat and so on. It is not the product that is the most economical for a guy who wants to have Uh, the cheapest possible speaker for <laughs> for that size and so on, certainly not. But it competes very well with other expensive two-way speakers, of course, because it has much lower distortion. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate a little bit, Peter, about the fact that if we take a look at the loudspeaker range within the Lingdorf brand, it's you usually kind of love to work with two-way systems and add Woofers, yeah. but this is the first speaker that is meant to be, uh, yeah, as a 2.0 system. Yeah. So that's a bit of a another it's a, path. It's a bit of a detour, yeah. and it is not really, you know, let me say in this way. I'm always a guy who wants to say, for the Lundorf brand, we have to give the most bang for the buck when you close your eyes, right? This is, we could have made more bang for your bucks if it shouldn't be a very beautiful thing to look at also. So it's, it's, it's like, in a way, it's not really my baby because I'm still a hi-fi nerd, like, you know, I really want bang for the buck. And, and that's not what it's optimized for. But we have, we're selling pretty darn well because a lot of people who have a nice flat and so on, nice furniture, Scandinavian style furniture, and so on, they say, it's just perfect. And we don't need something that will play louder and all of that. So it, it's, it's doing well. We will be doing also something that is higher end in two plus two systems and so on. Uh, so that I'm sure will be <clears throat> coming, but it will be much more expensive because the purified drivers are way more expensive than really what you normally call the very high quality drivers. Uh, because we make, it's not only because we make them in Denmark, but we make them with great, great accuracy. Uh, our standard of uh, consistency in the frequency response is so good that if you overlay two woofers from different production, you really cannot see the difference in the frequency response. We say that we don't sell pair, matched pairs of our woofers because there is no way we can match them better than all of them are. So it's a different level of assembly and manufacturing control and quality than anything that I have ever come across. Yeah, first listen for us was, was quite, uh, quite amazing because after hearing a few notes, it was like, where are the woofers? Yeah. It's, it, it can really produce a lot of deep bass and if you take into consideration yeah, how small the cabinet is, that's yeah. quite impressive. It is, yeah. But that's all the ideas from Bruno, Lars and Carsten combined and the fact that I would say 
especially Lars Rispowals, he is a real scientist, you know, he wants to know all the basics. And then he starts working with the mathematics and so on. And Bruno is a guy with a crazy good ideas sometimes. And Carsten Tingor is also a genius in, in speaker design. Uh, and probably the most experienced speaker driver designer worldwide, because he's been designing so many drivers for so many different companies. So that team is a, like a dream team. It, it's unbelievable. And of course, then Lars and Bruno also make Class D amplifiers, where I'd say Bruno is more into the Class D, and Lars used to be one of two, a handful of best digital audio engineers worldwide. And now he's probably the most scientifically competent speaker driver design world, designer worldwide, which is quite amazing. So we have Purify speaker drive, driver units, but yeah. there's also Purify amplifier technology, the eigentact amplifiers. What's going on there? That is primarily Bruno's baby. And Bruno has come up with a feedback loop that is much, much, much faster than anything that has been done before and has a much tighter grip of, uh, of the output. You know, in the old days, a lot of people thought that uh, feedback was bad. Bruno has written a couple of notes about feedback, where, which are, even for lay people, they're quite funny. Because uh, his, his science is absolutely bulletproof. And the proof is in the pudding, by the way, because these are the lowest distortion amplifiers ever. Uh, so uh, he's, he's a genius regarding especially those, the, the feedback loop system and so on, which to some people may seem very, you know, shouldn't be very complex. But apparently it's, it, I have no idea what is going on. And I've tried to understand there is no way a normal person could possibly understand what is happening. But is it then kind of the same thing going on like with the, the drivers that you say, okay, these amps also have lowest distortion, audible, and it's kind of the same experience, but then in amplification? It is very interesting in a way, and that, you know, our hearing is so amazing. Because even if a speaker driver, by the raw numbers, have a thousand times more distortion, than a purify amplifier. Through a good loudspeaker, you can hear the difference between the purify amplifier and another amplifier that maybe you only have a hundred times less distortion than the speaker, because they're different kinds of distortion. And some distortion that shows up as 0.001% can be audible, and some that show up, up as 0.1% can be virtually inaudible. So the, the, that, is, that is very, very interesting that with different kinds of distortion components, you, uh, you can segregate the speaker from the amplifier and you absolutely want everything to be as clean as possible. And I was surprised when I saw the, of course, when I saw the specifications of the Purify Eigentact, I thought, whoa. Uh, but I also thought, you know, what, is this really gonna be audible? But yes, it is audible. And I, I'm not an engineer, but I have a philosophy, I have a philosophical idea about why it is so much better than other amplifiers. And, and of course, it has, technically spe speaking, a, an extremely low uh, output impedance or high damping factor, as it was called in the old days. And damping factor is something that is widely, totally misunderstood by audiophiles and even reviewers, because damping factor has really very, very little to do with damping. But it is an indication of how much control the feedback loop has at the output terminals. And if you have a situation like with the Eigentag, where the damping factor, I think it's 800,000, at one kilohertz, and it's still more than, as far as I call, recall, 10,000 at 20 kilohertz. It means that 
the terminals of the amplifier is absolutely stable and nothing can matter in terms of the the feedback coming from the speaker driver and so on, the speaker impedance. Uh, all of those things that happens from the speaker to the amplifier can have absolutely, is not even theoretically possible that it can influence the sound of the amp. Whereas if you have a class A amplifier, something with a not a tight feedback loop, maybe the amplifier have relatively low distortion. By the way, it does not, <laughs> typically. <laughs> but if, even if it had very low distortion, the speaker was, is going to influence the sound of the amplifier all the time with the impedance, with the inductance, with everything that goes on in the speaker driver. So there are so many things that are that are tied together. Bruno Lars would be much better at explaining this, but they would probably explain it in a way where nobody really could possibly understand what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so this this uh, purify uh, uh, amplifier technology is now showing up for the first time in a, an upcoming Lingdorf product, the MXA 8400. What is this this beast? Well, it's a, it's a, this, it's, was designed for multi-channel amplification and uh, we took great care of making a power supply that is powerful enough. I think it's probably the, 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 the most powerful um, switch mode power supply that has ever been done for 220 volts. And we have been taking very great care of also designing in such a way that doesn't create a lot of noise back in your grid. Because some amplifiers, you know, if you have an old fashioned amplifier, very powerful with a huge power supply, it's going to switch on the grid and it's going to create a heck of a lot of noise on the grid. And guess what? <laughs> that will not show up in the amplifier specifications, but it'll for sure make it more life more difficult for all your other products. So that's where I think Lindorf Audio is also, our engineers are very, very concerned about the practical thing. You know, it makes so, no sense to make the lowest distortion amplifier in the world if that amplifier make the preamp sound shitty <laughs> because of the way it messes up the grid. So we, we're taking great care with that. And so it's a very low noise power supply and it's a uh, power call supply. It so power perfect? Power perfect. Also because sometimes, you know, the, if you have several channels on one power supply, the channels can start to go out of sync with each other and so on. And that's also something we've taken care of in the design. Also something that is not, often is not tested by reviewers and so on. They measure one channel, maybe they measure two channels. Do they ever measure eight channels? No, because they don't have enough resistors to take up all that power. So what you are saying is that this amplifier is, is that it can, can generate almost max power at all eight channels well, at the same time? At the same time. With the, the same time. kind of distortion? Yeah, yeah. you can. Wow. And of course, that is not entirely necessary. But if you can do it, why shouldn't you do it? So we design the power supply in-house. We don't buy a off the rack power supply. When that is said, because of the Purify Class D design, the power supply has a lot less influence on the sound of the amplifier. But then again, as I said before, the power supply can make all other products in your house sound worse. And we make sure that is not happening. Will we be seeing more of the purifier um, amplifier technology in upcoming products from Lingdorf? I would not be so surprised, but it's, we're working on some stuff, but it's not something that will go into our existing range. It's going to be add on to our range. Um, by the way, with the Purify amp, the, the, there's so many things you find out when these guys work on improving stuff, like the, 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 the driver chassis had to be changed because all of a sudden that ring, the front ring of the chassis makes distortion. Nobody knew. We found one thing, just one thing with the Purify uh, Class D amplifiers at Eigentakt, 
was that uh, when we sent some of the first modules out for a manufacturer, we got a sample back, there was 7 dB increase of distortion. And the reason was that he used this, the normal speaker terminals. And the washer was made out of steel. And that created more distortion than everything else in the amplifier. 7 dB more. And I don't think anybody ever spotted that before because the rest of the distortion was so high. I heard rumors that there is even a second generation Argentact amplifiers coming up. What's that all about? That is uh, another design which is... Um, I, I'm not, I don't understand the details of it. Uh, but uh, it's a slightly different topology. It will give more power, uh, 350 watts, uh, 375 into 8 ohms and 750 into 8 ohms. Uh, 1.2 kilowatts into 2 ohms. <clears throat> so it'll be a more powerful design. And the problem, by the way, with very powerful power amplifiers is they also have a lot of gain. So you use the same input to create more power. And of course, that's good. But you also, also run the risk that you're all of a sudden going to hear the noise from all your other things because you have so much gain. So uh, we took immense care of, uh, of making sure that uh, people can realize good projects with that uh, Class D design because that is going to be the lowest distortion amp ever. But the power numbers are quite impressive. But do you really need that, that kind of power? Because the Purify drivers are rather efficient and clean. Do you need all that horsepower then? Again, it's a little bit maybe a question of if you can do it. And once you have, for this particular design, I don't think we would save a lot by reducing the power. I don't, I, I, know, I don't know exactly, but I don't think we would save an awful lot because the emphasis was really on this super low distortion. Distortion is at min minus 126 decibels. And you know, like with the normal, with first eye contact, uh, when you see the distortion uh, curve on our amps, it goes like this and then it comes up near the the, the, the point where the amplifier starts to clip. But it's a completely even line. It doesn't have the wrinkles and ups and downs and so on that you see from many amplifier designs. But the lower part of that is all the basic noise of the system. It's not really distortion. So it's super clean at any level, any impedance, any frequency, which is really the, the fantastic combination. And when people think about like a class D, uh, class uh, A amplifier, that you make a class A to avoid the switch, the switching distortion, this cannot do so. it. It's not. It cannot possibly do uh, the uh, the uh, the distortion in the zero point of the waveform point because it doesn't know what that is. So uh, it's a fascinating technology in many ways. And, and it's interesting for me because I was working together with Lars Rispo when he did the world's first fully digital amplifier. And I had never in my wildest dreams uh, thought that, that we could achieve the, the specifications and the sound that we have now. Talking about achievements, Peter, if you look back at the roadmap and the product map of, of of Lingdorf and Steinway Lingdorf, there are some really beautiful products. Are there still, or is there still something that you want to achieve? That you say, okay, we need to make this kind of product, or this, we, this is missing? There's a couple of, there's a little bit here, there. Of course, we need to do something with uh, purified drivers, which will, it's gonna be a lot more expensive than the current Lingdorf speakers but it will also be uh, a performance that, you know, it, it's never gonna be totally proportional to the extra cost, but in, compared to other products where you say you pay 20 times more and you get 
this much improvement, this is going to be quite a dramatic improvement. Peter, thank you very much for this uh, conversation. That was my pleasure. Thanks again. Okay.